Not many people can boast a Super Rugby Premiership, Rugby Championship and a few Champions Cup titles. And yet Will Skelton, the second rower here in La Rochelle and for the Wallabies, is known instead for his size. At 2 meters 3 centimeters and over 150 kilograms, a size 18 boot, he's known for being the biggest man in rugby. And yet he says his biggest opponent isn't on the pitch, it's nutrition and dieting. Well, Skelton, thank you so much for welcoming us to La Rochelle. Thanks for having me. Do you consider La Rochelle your home these days? Yeah, I, uh, I think, yeah, speaking of my wife, like wherever we go is sort of home. So when I was at Sarri's, that North London, St Albans was home for us. And now, yeah, La Rochelle, we love it here. It's, it's a beautiful little city and uh, my son was born here. So there's a lot, a lot, to, uh, a lot of mem memorable things have happened in our life here. You were, what, born in New Zealand? of Samoan heritage, grew up in Australia. You could have played for any of the three. Um, yeah, being I born in Auckland, moved to Sydney when I was 10. So um, obviously living in the New Zealand, it's playing for the All Blacks is always the the goal um, and the dream. I was, I was always the big kid. I was always the tallest, uh, always the heaviest, but I probably wasn't, I wouldn't say, oh, I wasn't the best player or wasn't as fit as all the other boys. Probably wasn't as hard like I don't know when you're 15 when you're 14 15 you really don't know how to throw your weight around how to control your body were you ever teased uh, was there ever mocking because of your size were you like yeah of course that's you know that's the that's what comes with it I think that's probably why I'm probably a lot more quick-witted now with remarks with joking in the team banter I love that sort of stuff um, I probably built a tolerance to it as a young age mm. but now that like, nothing really gets to me only probably if my wife says something to me then <laughs> something at home that probably gets to me but no I think um, it, it's all it's all a part of it it's all a part of a rugby player you know um, you got to take criticism when you're on the pitch and then off the field if it's banter if it's uh, mocking if it's online you know it's something you just got to really dust off and, and, and push through so you're an 18 year old, you've moved into Rugby Union, tell me about the journey from there. Uh, I was in the academy, um, living it up, you know, like as all academy players do, thinking I'd made it when I was just in the academy on, you know, on peanuts for the year, <laughs> training, starting at six o'clock till eight uh, and then going to work and then coming back after, after work and training from 4.30 till 7.30. What um, did you do when you say work? I was a removalist. A removalist? Yeah. Of course office, you were. No, sorry, office relocation. That's ah. what my title was. I was always, I was a young, um, big kid, so they'd get me to lift all the boxes and whatnot, but went on very much money with the academy, so I had to earn somehow, and that was, uh, yeah, obviously getting a day job, that was tough. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Then you come to the Saracens. I mean, you've done well out of the Southern Hemisphere in yeah. a few seasons. It and they right. say what? Lose um, lose what? some weight, yeah. I like think. how many kilograms? <laughs> well, I just got into I got into I broke my arm, so I signed there 2017, 18 that mm. season, and I'd broken my arm, so I'd literally come off surgery two weeks, so you do nothing, and I basically said to myself, that's my holiday, Ooh. and I ate everything under the sun. I, no, What's your I, poison? What do you eat when you say I'm going to eat everything I'm a, under the I'm sun? I'm a lot of sweet tooth, so I love like cakes and cheesecakes and milkshakes and stuff like that but I think it's probably the quantity of food I eat like I can I probably don't know how to stay no and then I'm full my body doesn't know that I'm full I just keep eating but yeah I love dessert I love uh, you know, ice cream fire, you name it all of it all of it yeah. and then after your injury um, I still remember this I landed and the first thing they said was jump on the scale and it was just after a flight and I said, I did say, I gave him a caution, I was like, oh, I just got off. I just arrived this morning. I might be a bit heavier than normal. And I jumped on, I was about 157 kgs. Yeah, they were on a mission to break me. I think after that, they, it was my own doing. I came in heavy, but um, no, yeah, it was a tough uh, few months after that. When you get told that, you sometimes feel like, I'm never going to be the skinny guy. <laughs> just leave me alone. Yeah, I guess so. I think. 
I guess my best weight would still be heavier than everyone else. That's anyway. the thing. So I think for me, um, being being fit is a, there's always that weight goal mm. um, that will never leave me until I finish my career. I know, and there's a lot of guys now playing who have that have similar problems. For us, it's basically always cardio. It's always oh, you got to watch what you eat, and um, that's always a struggle and a challenge for. Us bigger guys, you know. What helps you keep it in check? No cakes, no, no half no, a cheesecake. No, it's not even that. that. That's the thing. It's not even that. So, so after that season, um, I had a, I had, I was pretty injury prone after I came in heavy. Mm-hmm. The following season, um, so I signed a two-year deal, and that was my last year. Um, I came in about 148, 149, and again they weren't happy, uh, which they shouldn't have been. That was on me. Um, so I, my wife said to me, well, we think we should get a nutritionist. So I went online and we found one. Um, her name is Amelia and she was great, you know, and I dropped like, I think I lost like 12 kilos. Wow. Yeah, just in, yeah, so. What did you do? So basically, I tracked my food. Mm-hmm. So it was like quite pedantic. I got a, the MyFitnessPal app and yeah. literally weighing my food, weighing yeah. my what carbs I can have. I had, she put me on a strict uh, calorie deficit mm-hmm. for the week. So you didn't cut out any food groups? No, I wasn't. That's why it was so cool. Like I I could have my donut after dinner or my cheesecake or whatever, but it just meant, oh, I couldn't have more carbs at lunch or, and sometimes I thought, man, I think I actually need that for fuel. Like I need mm. that to train. Mm. I think I won't, I'll be right. And it made me a bit more mindful of how I viewed food and how my relationship with food was, and um, and now I still I still have her um, as a nutritionist, but I'm a bit lazy with my I check in with her every week. That was my thing, and I was quite I was real strict uh, back at Saracens, uh, and now I'm just enjoying life in France. That's interesting what you said about your relationship with food. What is what was your relationship with food? If I had a a whole cheesecake after after training, you know what I mean? I'll blow out, whereas if another guy on my team who doesn't need um, to lose weight, he can eat whatever he basically wants. Yeah. And that's always, that's the joke that we have if we're doing cardio on a Monday and we're looking and I see Teddy Toma, he's just chilling, you know, he's getting a massage or if it's bloody Higher West who doesn't need to do that sort of stuff and where they're working and we're grinding. Um, but that's, I guess that's just the way um, it goes because my mum and dad did groceries and for example we got Cocoa Pops or if it was Rice Bubbles or a cereal that wouldn't be Wheat Bix because Wheat Bix was the standard one yeah. that he always had yeah. at home. That would be gone in like a day because we'd like over, we'd absolutely, like we'd have a binge bowl. It. We'd binge it. Yeah. We'd have a bowl, I'd come back an hour later and go, oh, I still feel like the Cocoa Pops, that, that's going to run out soon. I need to get in there before my brother takes it or my little brothers take it. Um, so food wouldn't last in my house. So whenever mum and dad would do a big shop, like uh, they wouldn't have to hide it, but she'd have to say like, come on, we got this has got to last. Like, Yeah, come on. Come on, chill out. Like this is not, it's not going to run away. Um, and I think that's, I sort of bought that from when I was young age to, to even now. You still have struggles now. Like I, I can weigh in four or five kilos heavier than what I was the week the week before, um, and that just that changes because I'm so heavy and I'm so big um, compared to not yourself but another player in my yeah. position. Uh, one kilo for them fluctuation is probably three or four to me. Yeah. Um, and a lot of other guys in my position who uh, have that same profile have that have those troubles moving forward. I think that's what coaches and trainers have to get in the head that that's it's not just one mold fits all. Um, this, the lock's supposed to be like this. The prop's supposed to be like this. Um, but yeah, I think that's uh, that's a little reflection that I've had over, over my experience.